Ah, now then, today we're doing a story that's been on the Buzzsprout site for several years. Uh, I wrote this story quite a long time ago. It's from uh, 1974. And it's about a, an incident, a, a road accident. Um, no, nothing, none of our fault. It just, um, it's Michael, my brother-in-law, when he was our mechanic. And we lived in New Bolingbroke in Lincolnshire. And he was taking this lorry to this testing station at Grimsby for a test. It was a customer's lorry. And he'd serviced it and prepared it for its test. And off he went and uh, he nearly didn't get there. So this is quite an amusing story. Um, uh, yeah, it's before the breathalyzer. Yes. Um, seat belts. Yes, I think maybe there were seat belts. <laughs> by the 74. Uh, whether people use them or not, I don't know. But uh, we shall see. I hope you enjoy this, it's quite amusing. Okay, we're going to begin this story called Michael Goes to the Testing Station. It's taken from Itzerum Life Book 3, Ivy House, New Bolingbroke, 1970-1984. At about the time of this next incident, we were running four or five lorries, mainly on general haulage and complaint tyre collections. There was a Bedford KM 16 tonne long wheelbase flat lorry used mainly for straw and vegetables. The main cage structure on this body made it useful for tyres too. The Comma Maxi load with its unique and noisy two stroke diesel motor was used by number one driver Albert on a permanent potato contract with John Hobsters of Boston, one of the larger and more reputable potato merchants in the area. Albert went to markets in the north of England. Most weekday nights, the maxi load was a strange beast. Unlike most heavy commercials, which used normal four-stroke diesel engines, the Comma had a two-stroke, but with only three cylinders. These were horizontal like the Porsche sports car, but in this case, each cylinder had two pistons and they were facing each other. Now if that hasn't confused modern engine aficion aficionados, wait for the rest. Albert loved this motor, as indeed did most comma drivers. They were the end of an era of individually, individuality in commercial vehicles, where manufacturers did not just build the lorry, but the engine too. Most of you will have handled a little two-stroke motor today, either in your strimmer, chainsaw or, or hedge cutter. Small buzzy little motors that rev fast. The comma, like all of the two-strokes, had no inlet or exhaust valves. The pistons worked on an enormous central double type crankshaft and the whole machine ran at huge revs. They may have you may have heard these multi-cylinder Japanese motorbikes that made a huge howl. The Comma two-stroke made just such a noise, but the engine itself was over ten times larger. It would decoke itself automatically when the cylinders became overfull of baked-on soot. It would evacuate this through the exhaust in glowing lumps, quite spectacular, uh, at 50 or 60 mph on the motorway. A real man's lorry. There were two Ford D-series flatbed lorries with wire cages for the tyres and an even more elderly Austin FJK 140 12-tonne box van. More about that one another time. The reason for all this information is to explain that we had our own mechanic, Michael, my brother-in-law. He worked for us on four days each week, with one day, one day off to go to college. To help with running costs, we serviced and repaired commercial vehicles for other firms too. One was Axle Line of Boston, run by a colleague in the tyre trade. Hugh was the ex-Dunlop representative. Axle Line sold axles, wheels and hydro hydraulic rams. Most of these were manufactured in Birmingham and one of our lorries normally brought them weekly back on a Friday after delivering a load of complaint tyres to Burton-on-Trent. Axle Line, who were based in Bedford's Mill Yard in Boston, had one Bedford 7.5 tonne lorry 
uh, which was used for deliveries to their clients up and down the east of England. Uh, this particular day of the main story, Axel Lyons lorry was due for its annual test. Michael had spent some time checking it over and getting it ready and he was on his way to the HGV testing station at Grimsby. As usual, there were roadworks in the town and Michael was sat at the temporary traffic lights waiting his turn. Suddenly, and without any warning, there was a huge thump at the back of the lorry. Michael got out and there, embedded under the back of his vehicle, was a red Morris 1100 family saloon car. The windscreen of the car was shattered where it had hit the back of the lorry body and the bonnet was wedged well under the main chassis frame. As Michael approached to see if he could help, the driver's door opened and a man fell into the road. He gradually managed to get to his feet and as he spoke, Michael got a blast of whiskey-laden air into his face. This was about 2pm in the afternoon. Michael had to find a telephone box quickly to give us a call. Incredulous it may seem, but not when Michael is involved. This also well before the birth of mobile telephones. Will you telephone the testing station and tell them I've been held up? was the first thing he said. Testing stations, even today, are very particular about your test appointment. If you're late or miss them, you get black marks at the very least. It does not do to upset the testing station. You could well use your test slot and have to go back another day. They were very understanding when we explained and told them the tale. They knew Michael and how problems seemed to follow him around. Back to the lorry and the police had arrived. Grimsby's traffic system as it was in the 1970s could not cope well with major blockages in the centre of town. They had to move the wrecked car quickly. The driver and his even more inebriated friend were carried off too. Perhaps it was a case of being the worse for drink making them both so relaxed they had not even a scratch on either of them. A smallish breakdown lorry arrived and hooked onto the rear of the car. The policeman in charge asked Michael to drive forward, which he promptly did, and the Bedford lorry, the Morris 1100 and the breakdown lorry, in reverse, all proceeded in the direction of the testing station. The saloon car was well embedded under the rear of the lorry. They needed a bigger breakdown lorry to lift the Bedford off the 1100. Michael eventually arrived at testing station just before they closed for the day. The lorry passed its test amid immense interest from all concerned as Michael took great care to relate the tale in full. There we are, that's the end of that little story. Hope you've enjoyed listening to it, brought to you by Cracker Books. Now then, I hope you enjoyed that little story, uh, brought to you by Cracker Books. And, um, ah, yes, the hand. But I'll just get wavy about here. Let's try this one. This is better, yeah, okay. Okay, if you like it, now please give us a like. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, if you if you follow our channel, well, this is uh, December 2023, this is done, then it suddenly leapt up. Our, our um, subscribers have leapt up from about 150, 50 or 60 beginning of December it's now over 250 it's amazing it's uh, super it makes the channel grow it's uh, a lot better for us and uh, so give us a like and if you think about subscribing then do so it helps us a lot and share it how about sharing with your mates that helps it grow as well there there it's entertainment I just hope that you enjoy the stories that we produced they're there to entertain and at the end there's a link to all the books as if you fancy reading all the stories in a book then they're there um you know in book form and there's uh, some picture story books uh, animal story books kiddies story books and then of course there's the buzzsprout site where there's over 200 um uh, these stories written down and on audio so you can download them to anything you like and listen to them when you feel like it there we are. Thanks for being with us today.